Silicon Valley is designed by Scott Alms with art by Kerry Aitken and published by Grail Games. In the game, one of four players compete to grow their budding tech company from humble beginnings into a billion dollar behemoth. Hire workers, outsource some code, and build those products all while remembering to grow your headquarters and seek out some venture capitalists. Join me for a brief overview of how to play the game, and then I will give you my feelings on the game. Before we get started, I'd like to point out that this is a prototype copy of the game that I have. The final components look a bit different, and I believe are a little bit easier to read, especially on some of the product cards. Silicon Valley is played over a series of rounds. Each round, players will perform three actions in turn order. The action choices consist of hiring or poaching an employee, expanding your headquarters, acquiring venture capital funding, outsourcing tech, launching a product, sunsetting a product, and performing layoffs. Each of these actions could be performed three times or a player could choose to take less than three actions in their turn. Although I'm not sure why you would want to do that. After each player has performed up to three actions each, then the player's companies can each perform their operations. During the operations phase, players will collect ongoing benefits and pay any necessary upkeep. During the course of the game, there are two types of actions. Instant actions are shown with the exclamation mark. The infinity symbol alerts players that an action is an ongoing one, which will usually happen during the operations phase. A company's valuation throughout the game is shown on this track at the top of the board. Notice this small symbol, which shows that any current employees will get a raise if you get this evaluation. Additionally, most of the information in the game is open. However, you can choose to keep secret how much code you have earned and how much money you have earned throughout the game. Let's take a look at the actions in more detail though. First, you could hire an employee or poach an employee. These are listed in the same action, but they're slightly different things. Hiring an employee is from the employees shown out here on the main board. If you have the same symbol showing as one of these on the card in your headquarters, you get a discount for each symbol shown. So it's possible a five cost employee may be as cheap as three or maybe even as cheap as two. Pay the money to the bank and you have hired the employee. Make sure you have enough employee spots in your headquarters. Your starting headquarters has room for three employees. You can also poach an employee getting the same discount, but the cost starts at 15. Don't forget to gain any instantaneous benefits in code for hiring your employee. Poaching an employee can happen more than once in a round. The next action is expanding your headquarters. You might want to expand your headquarters in order to be able to hire more employees or to launch more products. You can expand your headquarters as much as you want to, but every section costs $5 more than the last. For example, your first section costs five, your second costs 10, your third costs 15, your fourth is 20, and so on. Venture capital funding allows you to gain new funds to hire more employees and to expand your headquarters. You pay for venture capital funding with coding. The coding cost may be reduced in the same way as employees when you have matching symbols in your headquarters. You get a reduction in code cost. Venture capital cards are a great way to combo different types of actions in the game. Outsourcing is when you pay for code without hiring new employees. The two code costs one, the three code costs two, and the four code all costs three. Taking this action only gives you a single piece of code. When you launch a product, you use code to bake the pattern shown on the product card. If you are the first one to launch a product, you get the innovator product token. You will get the immediate benefit and ongoing benefit at least once because no one can launch the second mover version of the product in the same round of the game. However, when someone launches the second mover version of the product, by copying your code, you must flip your innovator tile to its B side. This might cause you to want to sunset the product. Sunsetting the product means that you remove it from your headquarters. Sunsetting the product causes you to lose one valuation on the valuation track. In a similar way, when you choose to lay off an employee, you will lose one valuation for your company. Each employee laid off causes the player to lose one valuation. However, this may be necessary because these employees cost far more than they are worth later in the game. Once a player has taken up to three actions, play passes to the next player. Play continues in this way until each player has chosen their actions. Players may now simultaneously complete the operations phase of the round. During the operations phase, players first collect any ongoing benefits. This will include things like valuation, money, and code. After collecting ongoing benefits, players must pay upkeep. Employees and headquarters both have money symbols on them that shows how much they cost to maintain. You must pay $1 for each of the upkeep symbols shown. You will pay for your headquarters first, then your employees. Finally, products have a code requirement for upkeep. Pay the required code cost. If you're unable to pay the cost for any of your items during the upkeep stage, you must discard either products or employees. Headquarters will never be removed. It is if an angel investor has bailed you out 
and keep your company afloat. Unfortunately, if you lose employees or products during this forced layoff or sunsetting, you will lose valuation twice rather than once. The goal of the game is to reach the highest valuation. The game will end after someone reaches 1 billion or more in valuation. Play does not end immediately. Instead, all players will get to finish out the entire round, including the operations phase. This is because ties are broken first by money, then by code, and then players share the victory. Now that you know the basics of the game, let's talk about what I think about it. First of all, what drew me to the game is the table presence. I love the artwork and the colors and the fact that it has polyominoes. I have now played the game at least twice at every player count, and I found it to be a challenging yet rewarding game. Perceptive players will pick up on the types of combinations you need to succeed in this game. There are several puzzles going on, but there's just enough randomness in the different types of cards and player interaction that each play feels a little bit different. One of the most deceptive things in the game is what money is doing. Money is really just something that keeps your engine chugging along in this game. You need it, but you don't want to focus on it. Really what money does is it draws your attention to the venture capitalist cards. Venture capitalist cards are one and done cards, but they often allow you to take a secondary action or a combo action, depending on how you look at it, so that you can get a bit farther in one round than any other player. At first, products don't seem important, but players will seek them out as it's almost the only way to get valuation and keep the game moving. That part is at least intuitive. What comes later is the ramp up of poaching with second mover tiles. It is extremely apparent why a second mover tile cannot be bought in the same round the product was innovated. The net gain on second mover tiles allows players to quickly grow the valuation of their company, and savvy players will be laying off employees and sunsetting products at a pace that would make most tech bros around the world squeal with glee. After all, who needs to actually invent a product when you can just buy out the company who invented it anyway? My favorite player count for this game is three players. I feel like the four player game drags on just a little bit too long and the engine doesn't quite get built up as fast as I would like. In a two player game, it often feels a little bit too take that, where you're working against each other almost directly, but in a three player game and even in a four player game, this is reduced as most people see that you're just trying to grow your company and it doesn't feel as personal. I found poaching of employees to be rare for the most part, but it does happen occasionally. Even so, most people won't mind as you have to lay off employees without getting too attached to them throughout the game anyway. It's business, baby, and this game only highlights the worst parts of humanity. It's still a rather fun game, and it's a joke about all those abstract and terrible decisions from the top most will never have to make. But maybe that's part of the argument of this game, whether made intentionally or not, when it's just business, it's a lot easier to make those harsh decisions. Finally, the solo game is quite challenging, and I have a video playthrough of it if you want to see some of it. The solo cards can be quite brutalizing, and the AI takes its toll upon you, and it's taking actions in such a way that there's no regard given to what you were doing, and it didn't care what I was doing at all. There's no purpose to it, and in some ways this is much worse than what a human would do because it pulled cards as if they were trying to grow their own valuation without actually doing that. The point of the solo eye is just to mess you up and it really does a fine job of that if you're into a difficult game. I think people who like a nice competitive Euro game with a little bit of interaction will appreciate this game. For those who enjoyed the Silicon Valley TV show or want to maximize their efficiency in a puzzle game with some spatial orientation, you'll absolutely love this game. For those who are afraid of any sort of interaction or meanness in the game, this probably isn't for you. Additionally, this isn't for those who are looking for a light, family weight game. Do you like difficult decisions with a cool theme and a slight bit of cultural commentary? Then you might really like Silicon Valley by Scott Alms and published by Grail Games. Thanks for watching the video. Let me know what your favorite spatial orientation game is, or favorite polyomino game. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Happy gaming, and I'll catch you later.